My name is Hong Ding. The system I'm, I'm going to present today is called Scalog. As you can see from the title, Scalog has three key features. The first, it is a totally ordered share log. And the second, it is unusually scalable. As you will see, it exceeds the throughput of its closest competitor by almost two orders of magnitude. The third, it is the only totally ordered share log that can be reconfigured to increase or decrease capacity without affecting, without affecting availability. Before going into how scale log achieves these results, let's agree on the basics. First, a log is a repository of totally ordered records. As shown in this figure, each record is associated with a sequence number. Each represents the record's positions in the log. A log is shared when it can be concurrently written and read by multiple clients. The API of a shared log includes two main methods, append through which a client can write records to the log, and subscribe through which a client can read the log. Shared logs are an important building block in distributed systems. For example, they are used for debugging, and applications like databases use a shared log to create a total order of transactions, which simplifies concurrency control. Indeed, all cloud service providers offer a shared log service. There are also multiple open source implementations, including Kafka, Corfu, and FuzzyLog. Applications require log services to provide two basic properties. The first, they should scale which means they should be able to sustain a large volume of append operations. Scalability is typically achieved by partitioning the log into a collection of shards. Second, it should support seamless reconfiguration, which means when workload changes, the log should be able to dynamically increase or decrease capacity without compromising availability. Designing a log service faces two challenges. The first is that Maintaining total order becomes expensive as the size of the log increases. In response, existing log services sacrifice either scalability or ordering guarantees. The graph gives you a quantitative sense of each log, each log implementation's choice. Log implement implementations are represented as dots in the graph. Higher in the y-axis means stronger ordering guarantees. The more to the right in the x-axis, the more scalable the log is. Corfu, at the top left, guarantees total order, but becomes temporarily unavailable when the shards are added or removed. It achieves at most 570,000 writes per second, which falls short of today's most demanding systems. For example, Taobao requires millions of database writes per second at its peak. At the other extreme, Kafka theoretically scales arbitrarily but provides no ordering guarantees for records in different shards. FuzzyLog makes a balance. It partially orders records across shards at a relatively small cost in scalability. The second challenge is how to achieve scalability and seamless recon reconfiguration at the same time. A natural approach is to assign a single component for record dissemination and ordering. For instance, log device takes this approach. Clients send their records to a sequencer, which assigns them a sequence number and sends them to a shard. Since the same component is responsible for both record dissemination and ordering, it can easily handle reconfiguration. When new shards are added or removed, the log is still available. However, the centralized design has an obvious downside. The single component can quickly become a bottleneck, limiting throughput. To avoid this bottleneck, shared log implementations like Corfu decouples ordering from data dissemination. It allows clients to write data directly to storage servers, bypassing the ordering component. In this approach, clients first send a request to the ordering component, request a sequence number for each individual record, then use a function to map the sequence number to a shared ID and write the data to that shard. For correctness, the mapping function has to be agreed by all the clients and storage servers. The downside of, of the approach is that when new shards are added or removed, 
clients as storage servers have to achieve agreement on a new mapping function. Until they do, the system is unavailable. As our title suggests, Scalog is explicitly designed to take on these challenges. It targets on scalable shared log that is totally ordered and can be reconfigured seamlessly. When it comes to the tension between scalability and total order, Scalog provides an unprecedented combination. It offers the same total ordering guarantee as Corfu, but doesn't incur a comparable heat in scalability. Shards can be added or removed without affecting Scalog's global availability, and Scalog can grow to several thousand shards with literally growing throughput. And to resolve the conflict between scalability and seamless reconfiguration, Scalog takes a new approach. It lets clients write records to storage servers first. Each shard naturally builds a local order. The ordering component then leverages this local order to build a global order for all records across shards. This significantly reduces the overhead of the ordering component and allows Scalog to achieve much higher throughput than the second approach. Additionally, Scalog doesn't rely on a mapping function to map sequence numbers to shard IDs. Therefore, it is easy to achieve seamless reconfiguration. Let's see in more details how Scalog orders records. Scalog's design, oh sorry. Oops. Scalog's design includes a data layer and an ordering layer. The data layer is responsible for storing records in the log. It is implemented as a collection of shards. Each shard has F plus one storage servers to tolerate F failures. In this example, we set F equals to one. So each shard includes two storage servers, a primary and a backup. As I mentioned before, the ordering layer is used to merge the separate local order that naturally arise within each shard into a global total order. To see how, let's assume now that the ordering layer is centralized and never fails. In Scalog, clients write records to the primary of a shard. The primary then replicate the records in FIFO order to its backups. This guarantees that the orders stored at the backup are a prefix of, of records stored in the primary. This happens in every shard. Periodically, each storage server reports the number of records it has stored to the ordering layer. In this example, the first storage server in shard one would report four, and the second report three, and so on. Then the ordering layer computes for each shard the minimum value reported by all servers in that shard. This is the number of records that are durable in that shard, since they have been replicated at plus one times. This results a vector with one entry per shard. We call this vector a global cut. In this example, the global cut is three, one, and four. The ordering layer broadcasts the global cut to each storage server. Each storage server uses a pre-agreed deterministic algorithm to individually assign a, uni a unique sequence number to each record it has stored and included in that cut. This totally orders each durable record. The same process can re keep repeat, and new cuts are generated, and new sequence numbers are assigned. This mechanism not only allows to decouple ordering from data dissemination, but can easily accommodate reconfigurations. When a new shard is added, the primary of the new shard can immediately start to accept records from clients and replicate them to its backups. Other storage servers do not need to become aware of the new shard. They simply keep going. Periodically, each storage server reports the number of stored records to the ordering layer, which creates a new global cut with that extra element. The extra element represents the number of durable records in the new shard. Then the deterministic algorithm takes the new cut and assigns sequence numbers to, to the records. It includes, this is all it takes to add a, new, add a shard. Failures are sim similarly easy to handle. Let's say the backup of shard three fails. 
so that the primary of shard three is unable to replicate its records to the backup. When the ordering layer generates a new cut, because it doesn't hear from the backup of shard three, it will use the previous value it received from the backup of shard three. Therefore, the new cut looks like this. It naturally excludes records in shard three, while other shards are not affected. For records stored at the primary of shard three, but unreplicated, the append operation will time out, and the clients will retry to append them to a different shard. Eventually, the failure will be detected and fixed by restarting or replacing the failed server. Before that happens, Scalog's capacity is decreased because shard three is not available for writing, but the system is continues to remain available. So far, we have modeled the ordering layer as a centralized component that never fails. In reality, Scalog runs a fault-tolerant ordering layer with Paxos at its core. To support a large number of storage servers, we extend the ordering layer to include a tree of aggregator nodes. Each leaf aggregator is responsible for a subset of shards, and recursively, parent aggregators process the value produced by their children, enabling the ordering layer to handle a large number of shards. Aggregator failures are easy to handle because they only keep soft state. If one fails, its replacement can, can receive new reports from storage servers overwriting the old reports. Because the new report in, uh, with the number of uh, records stored in that shard will always equals to or be greater than the old report. We have implemented Scalog in Golang. In the evaluation, we compare Scalog with Corfu and see how they perform during reconfiguration and their write throughput and latency. We used 40 servers from in Cloud Lab. The servers are connected with 10 gigabits per second network. Each record is four kilobytes in size and they are stored in SSDs. The replication factor we use is two which means two storage servers per shard. Let's first look at the impact on reconfiguration by adding a shard to the shared log. The left figure is for Corfu, and the right is for Scalog, our system. The y-axis is throughput. In the setting, we let clients generate requests at the speed of, uh, of 50,000 writes per second, and the x-axis is real-time in milliseconds. Both Scalog and, and Corfu we add a shard to the log at time 100 millisecond. From the figure we can see, during config reconfiguration, Corfu has a hiccup of uh, about 30 millisecond, because as I said before, all Corfu clients and storage servers need to achieve agreement on a new mapping function. In contrast, Scalog's throughput is not affected by reconfiguration. Then let's look at the throughput and latency for write operations. The figure shows latency change with various throughput values. The y-axis is the client perceived latency. The lower, the better. And the x-axis shows the throughput in log scale. The higher, the better. Because we have only 40 servers, when we need more servers, we emulate storage servers. But we do not emulate aggregators or Paxos. From the figure, we can see Corfu reaches a saturation point at about 600,000 writes per second while Scalog is not saturated when we used all the 40 servers in the emulation. At the same time, Scalog achieves lower latency than Corfu. To understand the maximum write throughput Scalog can provide, we emulate both storage servers and aggregators, and we run ma macro benchmarks on the Paxos to see how many shards the Paxos can handle. The, the evaluation shows that the ordering layer can handle 3,500 shards with two storage servers per shard, which builds up to 52 million writes per second with an estimated latency of 1.6 millisecond. However, this emulation only tests the limit of Scalog's ordering layer. We are unable to assess other scaling issues like network bottlenecks. There are more details in the paper, and the talk is only a high-level idea of the system. To conclude, we have designed Scalog. 
which is the first share log design providing the three key features, total order, scalability, and seamless reconfiguration. Scale logs throughput is limited by the number of shards the ordinary layer can handle, and the throughput each shard can provide. Through emulation, we have shown that scale log can saturate 3,500 shards, or 7,000 storage servers. If we had, a be had better SSDs, or used the memory as storage media, scale log were able to achieve much higher throughput. And also, we can treat latency for more shards scale log can handle. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Questions? Let me start by one question. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's beautiful and very impressive. As long as I stay within this number of shards, is, it, is there a guarantee that your approach is going to overperform any other possible approaches? Oh, what do you mean? Is this guarantee? What's the cash? What do I lose? Like it's uh, 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 the throughput uh, is uh, pretty high, and the latency is slightly lower than core foods, but it's still higher than the shared log implementations that do not provide total order. Mm -hmm. And we are working on a follow-up work to reduce the latency to see how much we can get scale logs latency as close as possible to those do not provide total order. Very impressive. Please. So you mentioned Corfu is totally ordered because there's one ordering component which generates the ordering for all the messages, right? Yes. So there's a single point where all the orders are generated. Versus in scale log, the messages are sent directly to each of the shards. They yeah. may arrive at independent times, right? Then yeah. some messages might get delayed. So as I see it, the ordering is still partially across shards. It is not a total order. Yeah, so what's the question? So how do you claim that it is total order? Because I didn't understand that point. Um, I think it is still ordered across shards, partially I'll go ordered. back a little bit. <laughs> this is so slow. Here is a cut, which includes a set of records. There is a pre-agreed deterministic algorithm. With the same algorithm, all the shards, each individual storage server will assign consistent sequence number to each record. Then this will build a total order of records. Agreed. So but in this case, message 5 could have been generated before message 4. If there was a single ordering component, we would have determined 5 to be generated before 4. But since five might have reached shard three before four reached shard two, oh, we we send acknowledgement to clients after the number is assigned. Therefore, it guarantees linearizability. Okay. The linearization point is between the beginning and be after and ends at the uh, getting response after assigning the number. All right, got it. So, what is the lag typical? So we missed the point as in how frequently is the ordering generated? You mentioned there's some lag. Uh, in the evaluation, we use the 0 0.1 millisecond. Okay. We yes. want to minimize that latency because that's in the critical path. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.